Yeah, I can understand why they didn't put these two together. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Death and the Return of Superman. Otherwise, The Death of Superman and then The Reign of the Superman. This is the put-together DVD. Kind of like how they did The Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and Part 2 together, which, admittedly, that makes a lot more sense. This one also does. However, there is one very big issue. The Death and the Return of Superman is the dumbest fucking title. They should have just kept it as The Death of Superman. Something other than that. It's it's just such a lame title, so I understand why they didn't want to put the two together on principle of title. It is still one of those instances where they should have definitely put the two stories together. One is obviously the fall of Superman taking down Doomsday, and the second part is the appearance of these Supermen, all the while the mystery of the actual Superman being kind of up in the air. First off, I have to admit, I am actually a fan of the one that came out back in like the early 2000s that was directed by Bruce Tim. I even got his signature there. This one pretty much encapsulates the very, very finite details of the story. Superman fights Doomsday, dies, comes back, Lex and him have a niff, and then that's it. The Death and Return of Superman obviously has a lot more screen time to kind of fledge out stories. It has about an hour and 40 minutes longer than this one is. And there are a few things that they thankfully talk about, more so his reception to the people. Not everyone in general, but also people that he has helped out in his life. His relationship with Lois is far more compacted, far more uh, developed in this one. And his death is felt far more, especially with the absolute turmoil the battle is. We see the Justice League get their absolute asses handed to them, first by Doomsday, and then he takes on Doomsday, pretty much almost dies, defeats Doomsday, and then dies. And that's how it ends. It ends with this kind of peculiar uh, tease to other Supermen flying around. And I'll admit, the first part is good. I think that the first one does a much better job of encapsulating the comic that was the highest selling comic. I think it is still the highest selling comic of all time where Superman did in fact die. And if you're just watching it from the perspective of just watching the film, not knowing obviously what happens later on, it's still a pretty decent story and you really feel for the for the plight of the characters. The animation's really w good in the fight scene. Sometimes in the standing around, it's a little bit jonky. People change kind of their shapes and whatnot, but that's kind of what happens when you have limited budget that the DC Animated Universe does, but they always still put together a really decent product. I just thought that this one was all around a good story, even if I have seen it several times before. The second part, admittedly, is a little different to me because when Superman died and the comics were kind of coming out of what happened afterwards, actually one of my first instances of reading a Superman comic, and it was particularly about the robot Superman and trying to do what Superman could do and kind of fails at doing so. This one obviously has four different Supermen. It has the one clone, technically Superboy, that Lex Luthor made. We've got Steel, as a metal Superman, which I didn't expect. Robot Superman, who turns out to be a tool of Brainiac. And then we have a fourth Superman, being the one with the cool weird glasses who looks like he's straight out of an anime. I'll admit this one was the different one and the mystery of who was who was much more interesting to me. It had more of a narrative pull. However, it is a slow story. I felt all of it in this one. The first one has a pretty decent pace. I enjoyed it all the way through. Second part, I did have to kind of take a break here and there. It moves so slow for a second part, and this is supposed to be the conclusion of the story, and you're supposed to be really pulling me in, and there are certain elements that do. The Brainiac Superman being the astronaut who full-on thought that Superman would save him and is taking on his revenge on the idea of the, the very hero that he looked up to is kind of a cool idea, but there's never really a conversation until like the last three minutes about it and it's a bit okay but it's not as fully fledged out as I would have liked and then there's the whole part with the humans willingly turning themselves into those things and they become a gate and then they just die and that's it they don't really mention anything else about it we just see the girl find her dead boyfriend there's never really any juxtaposition as to what this was what had caused it and if there was any means of trying to save them I feel like Superman would have tried to do something or the Justice League would have tried to do something But I feel that the second part just drags it drags the whole time and it's because you're waiting for Superman to come back you know he's gonna come back but I just wasn't into it it's not because I have anything against the 
the hero. I liked how his relationship with Lois was developed. I did like how there was the idea of what Superman is and the different ideologies of who he is throughout the four different Supermen, his effect on the world and the Justice League. But in terms of entertainment value, the second part is definitely kind of one of those one-time watches. You could watch the first part several times because it has some cool animation, it has some cool fight scenes. The second one kind of does as well, but after watching the Doomsday fight, it's kind of like a mint comparison. It drags, it doesn't feel as strong as the first part is. While the mystery is there for the first time watch, it definitely is gone in the second viewing. The attraction to watching it is even further diminished. It's a decently put together DC animated universe film. I'm admittedly going backwards ever since watching the Justice League Dark one where everyone died. I know it's a little weird to work backwards, but everyone kept telling me that apparently, oh, you gotta watch all of them to really understand what's happening. And I don't know, I'm, I'm not getting it much yet. But otherwise, I will give this film a four out of seven, the two of them together. If I were to rate them separately, I would maybe say the first one is a four, and the second one is a three. The four just kind of raises it up just a bit of it to a overall four. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.